Meet the author of a work about staving off our own extinction, Jeremy Rifkin, who advises the European Commission. He's an American economist. He has just published The Third Industrial Revolution, which argues that the human species is coming to the end of a cycle. He contends that only a sweeping adoption of alternative energy sources will ensure that we enjoy our future and prepare a happy one for our children. Monsieur Rifkin, bonjour. Mr. Rifkin, you've said it is highly unlikely that human beings will manage to survive on this planet. We hear a lot of talk about economic crisis, but you say we are threatened with extinction. Isn't this vision a bit pessimistic? You know, 99.5% of all the species that have ever lived on this planet have come and gone. It's hubris to believe that somehow we are going to live in perpetuity here. Uh, so I think this is a moment of crisis. We're now uh, paying the bill for 200 years of an industrial revolution based on fossil fuels. We've spewed too much CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. We can't get enough of the sun's heat off the planet. And what we're seeing here is a fundamental change in the chemistry of the Earth. That doesn't happen often. So as my wife says, we are not grasping the enormity of this moment for our species. This is a species crisis. Can we turn the corner? Can we address climate change? Can we create a new, more sustainable economy? Can we do it with a clock ticking? And can we transform ourselves in less than 25 years? It's a pretty big if. One of your conclusions is that we must move into this third industrial revolution, which you say has to be carried by five fundamentals, five pillars, you call them. What are these ideas? The European Union has committed to a five-pillar third industrial revolution. I was privileged to develop the plan with the EU. It's the formal plan endorsed by the European Parliament, and now working its way through the European Commission. Uh, pillar one, the EU is committed to 20% 20, 20 renewable energy by 2020. That's a mandate. Every country has to do it. Pillar two, how do we collect what are essentially distributed energies that are found everywhere? Our buildings. We have 191 million buildings in the European Union, homes, offices, and factories. The goal is to convert every single existing building in the European Union, millions of them, to your own personal green micro power plant. You can get solar electricity off your roof, you can get wind electricity off your side walls of the building, geothermal heat converted back to energy underneath the building, garbage converted to energy in your kitchen, etc. Pillar two jump starts the economy. Millions of jobs, thousands of small and medium sized enterprises. So we have to convert the entire building stock of Europe in 40 years to a power plant. Pillar three, we have to store the energy because the sun isn't always shining. Or sometimes the wind's blowing at night, you need the electricity during the day. They're intermittent energies. So we're going to use all sorts of storage technologies, but most of it's going to be focused on hydrogen to store the energy. If the sun hits your roof, you create a little electricity. If you don't need some of it, you put the excess in water. The hydrogen comes out of the water into a tank. When the sun isn't shining on your roof, convert it back to electricity. Simple. This technology does already exist. Already, all of this technology exists. It simply has to be scaled in. Pillar four is where the internet revolution converges with the new distributed energy revolution to create a nervous system for this infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So when millions and millions of buildings in Europe are collecting their own green energy on site, storing it in hydrogen, like we store media in digital, then if you don't need some of that electricity, your software can program it so you can sell your electricity across an electricity internet, a smart grid, from the Irish Sea to the edge of Eastern Europe. Just like we create our own information, store it in digital, share it online. Mm -hmm. The last pillar, Pillar 5, is transport. Electric vehicles are out this year. Fuel cell vehicles are out in 2015. You'll be able to plug in your vehicle anywhere there's a building, get green electricity or hydrogen. And wherever you park, plug back in, get green electricity or sell your own back. Each of these components alone are nothing. They're meaningless. When you put the five pillars together in each city, each suburb, each rural area, they create an infrastructure, a node. And the node is a completely new economic revolution. Mm -hmm. It's power to the people. 
its lateral power. A lot of companies and people have interests that go against your theory of the third industrial revolution. Have you been subjected to pressures from lobbies, key figures from enterprise concerning your theories? Concerning your theories. Let me let me put this in the context. You know the music companies, they didn't see file sharing and music coming. When millions of young people around the world started creating software to share music, the music companies thought it was a joke. Then they got upset. Then they went out of business. And so I guess to answer your question, I'm not too concerned about the energy companies. We have far more distributed renewable energy than we'll ever have the little amount of fossil fuels and uranium under the ground. Some of the energy companies will make the transition. They are trying into renewables. Many of them will not. And as their, their energies get more expensive and more polluting, they'll just die out. We don't need them. What we will see here with this third industrial revolution infrastructure is a renaissance of small and medium-sized enterprises and producer and consumer cooperatives. The big companies that will survive, they'll transform their role and they'll be aggregators of networks because they have the logistical reach. You talk about small and medium-sized companies. Might they have a role to play in countries with emerging economies such as China or countries in Africa within this third industrial revolution framework? In terms of the, the developing countries, they're going to move quicker on this. They're going to leapfrog in. The United Nations Industrial Development Organization has embraced the third industrial revolution as a centerpiece for economic development across the emerging nations. In many parts of the world, there's no electricity. 300 million people in India have never had electricity. Millions of people in Africa, no electricity. They can leapfrog in. They have no infrastructure. So where there's no infrastructure in Africa and in India and parts of Asia, they can develop it right now. In 20 years, how would you like things to evolve? And how do you think they really will evolve? Let me say, I think my hope is that uh, we're seeing a change in consciousness. We have had uh, the mythical consciousness and religious consciousness and ideological consciousness. We're now starting to see the early stages of biosphere consciousness. I know that this third industrial revolution makes sense. It's compelling. It's practical. It's deliverable. It isn't rocket science. What we need to do now is government, business, and civil society come to the table in every community and put this third industrial revolution infrastructure in and get us into a post-carbon sustainable world very, very quickly. There's no plan B. Mr. Rifkin, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.